Hey everyone, welcome to the Conscious Report. I'm Derek. Today we are talking about cell phones. Uh, I went to go get a new cell phone number today. My brother works at a cell phone store and I went up there and I got me my, my fancy dumb phone here. It does uh, a lot of things. It's got a sideways keyboard. It uh, unlocks car doors. It remote toilet flusher and I believe also assist in time travel. It's the newest model that they carry and I'm proud of it. And my brother was showing me another phone that um, they have. That I, you know, Maybe this is n not new news to some of you guys. Apparently the phone came out a couple months ago. It's called the Galaxy S3. Galaxy S3 1.9 megapixel front facing camera monitors your eyes to know when you're looking at it, which keeps it from going to sleep from inactivity. So instead of your phone going black once you stop messing with it and poking at it for a couple minutes, this one actually reads your eyeball movement and knows when you're looking at it. Uh, it sees us, a Samsung representative says, at the set at the device's London launch. The company showed how the phone personal assistant software, S-Voice, will function similarly to Apple's Siri virtual assistant. The S3 is more like a good friend, a good friend, who listens intently and responds quickly. The, um, the fact that the Samsung, uh, the, the iPhone, well, I don't know. This thing to me is just creepy. I don't, I don't really invest too much money into cell phones. Obviously, they have a lot of use, and we've used them to live stream events and things like that. There's a lot of reasons not to use cell phones. Uh, for example, there are some studies done uh, quite a few you could look into it um, that show radiation dangers to cell phones you know and so maybe you don't believe in that well there's also just the issue that phones are becoming more and more invasive into our, our everyday lives and people have a technology addiction I know that I do and uh, I'm sure there's others who are worse than I am um, it's hard to you know we've gotten used to constant communication whether it's through texting or communicate on Facebook or on iPads and tablets and netbooks and all kinds of mobile devices so we can instantly connect with people and uh, it has become somewhat of an addiction so I know that a lot of people keep up with these things but it's important to at least if you're going to do so to be aware of what you're involving yourself in and we talk a lot about uh, how to empower each other well I think it's empowering to give each other knowledge on the devices you may be using and what you may or may not know about them and so we're going to talk a few different points on what some cell phones are doing and what they're able to do um, besides the fact that I will say let's just start out and get it out of the way you shouldn't text anything put it on Facebook say it over the phone email it or anything of that nature if you wouldn't write it on a postcard that you put in the mailbox that everyone can see what you wrote so you know just be careful in general practice uh, practice caution well let's look at this mobile phone cloning okay we're gonna look at different aspects of how cell phones can be used to monitor your behavior and how they are more and more and uh, there's the you know cops who often go through people's phones whenever they stop activists or if they suspect you of crime they can go through your phone and things like that whether it's necessarily legal or not so mobile phone cloning mobile phone cloning Cloning enables a phone to make and receive calls that appear to be coming from another phone. Cloning, uh, it says it used to be a lot easier in some other countries such as India, it's still a widespread problem. Um, but these days it seems to be more difficult and it seems to be uh, a fading industry. Crooks used to, would use cloned phones in order to sell phones that could make free calls that are then billed to the victim. Um, Besides the benefits are cloning uh, are available through other means now such as VOIP calls. And good point here that it adds as well. Organizations with extensive hacking resources such as the government can and probably do clone phones. But the ability to clone one phone via another quickly and wirelessly is not possible as depicted in uh, this, uh, this, this film we're talking about here. I disagree. I think that we have to suspect that any, any, as far as technology and tracking that the government has access to those things and really your, your cell phone carrier has access to, those, to that information and 
upon request. We've seen uh, Verizon and other telecommunications com companies work with the government along with the Patriot Act to uh, provide them with information for so-called terrorists whenever they need so. The government and the cell phone companies will work together on that information. So if the government is not necessarily involved with tracking your information, they have no problem getting getting it from the companies that are already their buddies. Number two, tracking people in real time. Phone apps such as Spy Bubble, Mobile Spy, Flex Spy, Stealth Genie, and others work invisibly in the background and handle several types of espionage, including real time location tracking. Um, after the software is installed, installed in your phone, somebody can walk, watch on a map as you go, you know, wherever you go throughout your day and, and then track you. Of course, to do this, they need to have access to your phone. Um, but it does add, however, an organization or government agency wouldn't need to install an app in your phone to track your location. Again, they only need to have access to the location tracking that your wireless carriers already have. And they just need to get that from them. Carriers already collect this data from you, in case you didn't know, and they sell it to anyone with the money to buy it. And they routinely provide location data to law enforcement agencies that request it. Your cell phone carrier routinely provides information to law agencies that request it. Remember that. Okay, this is an interesting one. Can they listen through the microphones in your phone? Okay, in this, uh, this show they're talking about person of interest, the stars says use other people's phones as remote microphones for listening in on conversations. Not just while they're on calls, but even when they're not using their phones. You know, and many people talk about that, like, uh, I guess people are worried about whatever, they, you know, they make a joke about hiding, leaving your cell phone outside or taking your battery out and things of that nature. Um, the form of eavesdropping, like phone cloning, used to be a lot easier. According to this article, nowadays it's no viable, generally available software tools that make it possible to listen through a phone's microphone when it's not being used for a call. However, all the standard mobile phone spy tools listed above, the ones we just went through, claim that they can offer the ability to listen in on, on calls as they are taking place. So some apps claim the ability to do it. I think uh, if anybody has that technology, it would be in the private industry uh, have, having been sold to the government because I mean governments of all types would want to use that for espionage purposes for the purposes of spying on each other um, trying to get cell phones to the enemy that they can then monitor the calls and track them GPS and all that good stuff reading text messages remotely spy bubble mobile spy and other tools say that they also let you grab text messages both incoming and outgoing. The messages can also be made available to law enforcement agencies by cell phone carriers, and presumably they also be available to any hacker who can access the carrier's databases. Yeah, I would say so as well, that again, everything you're putting online or putting it in, through a text, mes uh, text message from cell phone to cell phone is being stored and saved somewhere in some way and I, and I don't think when you delete those things on your cell phone that it's really going to be deleted from uh, another database that it has to go through. Downloading data apps like SpyBubble and Mobile Spy also deliver a large number of data types from victims uh, smartphones including complete call and SMS logs, all contacts, all email, all URLs visited on a browser including search queries which are displayed in URLs, all photos and videos taken with phones, and more. So everything on your phone taken. If these apps can do it, well, you can be sure that sophisticated hackers, spy agencies, organized crime groups, the government, and others can do it as well. Exactly. If you can just download an app online that can do this with your cell phone, yeah, there's definitely a better, more efficient version out there someone's using. Bluejacking. Never heard of it. Bluejacking is the use of Bluetooth wireless technology to either send messages or files to a phone or connection in other ways. The benefit of bluejacking is that the connection isn't conveyed through a carrier so it's harder to track and it's anonymous. Bluejacking is easy in fact. You can download bluejacking software from the Google Play Store or from any number of other sites. Well, you can bluejack off all night if you want. Apparently it's pretty easy. 
Some software lets you find hidden open Bluetooth connections and you can typically send messages, pictures, or even sounds. Although bluejacking is primarily used in sophomore pranks, it can be used for social engineering, which is one of the things the characters in this uh, show use it for. For example, you can send fake error messages to make someone believe the phone is malfunctioning. You could then offer to fix it for them and install spyware once you have access to the phone. Hey, that's pretty creative. I guess that's how you get somebody on the other one. Then you start tracking their phone and listening to their conversations, etc., etc. If that's what you're trying to do, be a spy. The technology is easy to use, but a skilled hacker is also skilled at attacking people, and that's the real reason bluejacking is such a threat. The bottom line is the phone hacking activity. Um, that you see in some films and I guess in this television show is exaggerated they say but these are certain methods that um, they can use to track you and now you've got phones that are reading your eyes how long is it before it becomes a feature that um, retina scan you know to 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 lock your phone well, you know that's I think that's the direction we're headed towards as well we've got stories of children having to do a palm scan to get their lunch uh, kids in San Antonio with RFID tags. The technology could definitely be helpful and can be useful to us in in the future, in the now. It can it can make our lives easier. But we also have to be aware and take note of how much it's taking over and what we're allowing to be taken from us. Maybe the loss of freedoms, the loss of privacy in the pursuit of I don't know, technological perfection. I'm not sure what everybody's after how, or how much smaller faster, smoother, cooler cell phones can be before we're satisfied. But maybe that's the whole point, is that humanity is constantly pursuing and seeking something deeper. We're always looking for this place of perfection. And really what we need to recognize is that only that is going to come from within yourself. You have to recognize that you already are perfect. This planet already is. We can make things better. We can assist in pushing the world in a more positive direction. I'm not sure if you're going to find that in the latest cell phone and whether it's health risks or uh, cell phones tracking, spying on you, and cell phone companies working with the government to turn over others' information. You're supporting that by using their phones, and we just need to, I guess, take a moment to think about it. What we're willing to to uh, to risk and to put up and to support in the effort to have an iPhone, an iPad, or a Galaxy, or one of these dumb phones, or whatever it may be. So just think about that when you're using these things. Be careful. Don't say anything stupid on your cell phone or on Facebook or on text or anywhere. If you can hear this, you are the resistance.